it's probably just being on the wheel is my favorite part. Um, like actually being in the zone and not listening to the narrative in your head or like what's going on in the world and just kind of like, I need to make a planter. This is what I'm gonna focus on now. Mostly through nature. Uh, so I've, when I was younger, I would go hiking a lot and pick up rocks. So I'm like, I definitely have like boxes of rocks at my house. But I would, I always found interest in the little things that are sort of overlooked and the small details in things. And so when I go into the mountains, I mean, we're in the gem state, so it's perfect. When I'm in the mountains, I'm focusing on, um, you know, like the, the quartz that's growing naturally and it has this lichen and moss on it and, or like the, the high desert terrain. I'm really just finding it from all around me and trying in, to incorporate it into my work. And the technique I do is called agate wear. So you mix different colored clay bodies to create one piece. So traditionally, ceramics is one clay body and then you cover it with a glaze and you add the colors after the fact. But with my work, I like to mix the different clay bodies together and that's what you see. Like I don't cover that with a glaze, it's exposed. And it comes, it, like it turns into really cool patterns um, and I can make the same form and use the same amount of clay body for each piece, but they're always gonna be different. And I think I like that part of it, that it truly is unique in that way. But it can be frustrating too, because it's like, I really like this pattern that you did. And I can try really hard to make that pattern happen again. But yeah, I'm drawn to mixing the clay bodies and exposing them once they're finished and then just putting a clear glaze over it rather than having a piece and glazing it after. And I think that was because I was so bad at glazing at PSU. <laughs> which coincidentally I have a room, the glaze room at BSU now is named after me, but I'm horrible with glazing, so <laughs> I'm working on that part. But I've been really, really lucky. And in 2019, I worked my ass off and then uh, had gone on sabbatical from my job and was like, okay, it's October, I'm gonna work my butt off through the winter because that's the busiest season um, and see how it goes. And then, yeah, so I had three months of just working really hard, doing markets, did wintry market. And then after that, I, I had enough money saved up to work until maybe, like to pay my bills till maybe March. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, well, I guess this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing now received a grant from the Alexa Rose Foundation right before we moved in here. And it basically made it so I could move into this space, um, which was awesome. So I wrote about, you know, I'm throwing pots in my bathroom and it'd be awesome if I had like a real space because I was moving things from, I was making it at my house and then taking it to the Potter Center. They would fire it, bring it back to my house, glaze it, then they would glaze it. But a huge part of it has been the community aspect of it. Having other artists around me to sort of bounce ideas off of or motivate you or just be, you know, is this weird, but is it like a cool weird? You know, like for me personally, it's been just really good to like chill me out. <laughs> I'm sort of, I'm a very anxious person and sort of like settle, it like grounds me and centers me in a way where I can deal with the world. I think I would be a very different person if I didn't have art in my life. I probably wouldn't be a very fun person. <laughs> Never. It might not be in the capacity that I'm doing now. Um, ceramics is really hard on your body, so eventually, you know, my body's gonna give out and, um, but I think I'm always going to be creating. So whether that's just hand building, um, yeah, unless I don't have my hands anymore, I don't think I could stop creating. Um, and I don't ever see that 
happening. <laughs> so.